Amy, you're on the board of the uh, Players Association. You're a very important individual in the scheme of things right now. That's why we want to talk to you today. What is the mood amongst the entire playing group across the AFL? Um, oh, probably more just a little bit of uncertainty. Like probably a lot of people in there going about their day-to-day -day lives at the minute is we're not really sure what's going to happen in the next hour, the next two hours, the next three days, five days, three months. So um, unfortunately, you know, it's not something we can get answers on straight away. So we're just going to have to take it, as I said, the hour by hour, literally at the minute. Last night there was a vote of, of some description that the players agreed that they wanted to play as soon as possible, is that right? Yeah, so essentially the players have come back to say that um, you know, we had this phone hook up last night that you know, they're, they're willing to play as long as um, you know, all the advice suggests that you know, their health and safety aren't at risk and that of the wider community aren't at risk and that's the advice we've been given so far. So at the minute the players have said that look, they'll, they're, they're keen to get the season started and um, you know, it's, in a sense it's a little bit out of our hands, you know, we'll, we'll take the advice of the professionals. So did the professionals say anything about playing um, versus just being in the general community, going about your everyday life and being more susceptible to contracting the virus or not? At the, at the minute the advice is it's exactly the same, you know, playing, playing a game of football versus going about your day-to-day -day life where we're probably in exactly the same risk profile as to contracting the virus, so it's, um, you know, for us that's, that's probably a, a sign that you know, let's just continue business as usual. Um, if that changes, well, that's something that we need to consider then and that's, that's sort of the conversation that will happen over the next couple of days. Is this a, just a strange time for everyone here? I mean, is, it's obviously the, the most talked about thing at the moment. Oh, it's probably been the most talked about thing I've ever had in my career. Um, yeah, it's look, it's a strange time. As I said, it's a strange time for everyone. You know, um, you know, my friends and family. You know, some of them are, are fighting to keep their jobs. To be honest, at the minute, so it's um, you know, it's, it's a really, really unique situation the world's facing, and and uh, we're not immune to that. But we're no different. We're not privileged or anything like that. Um, we, we've got uncertain times here as well, and um, you know, a lot of measures have been put in place here to try and uh, mitigate, you know, what potentially might happen. Um, so yeah, it's it's certainly a unique situation. Just on the on the job front, I suppose um, there's been a lot of talk about potential pay cuts across the board, and the players again won't probably escape that. Is that been discussed? Yeah, look, it was discussed last night. Um, you know, some numbers have been flown around left, right, and centre. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, we don't really know what the impact's going to be to the industry. We know the industry's going to have a tough year. Um, but again, it's that's probably reflective of the whole world. You know, as I said, I've got friends and family who are in a very similar boat and, you know, they feel it, we're going to feel it as well. Um, we understand it's our responsibility to the game as well that, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, we do whatever we can to, to make sure that we get through these times and um, what, what it'll actually look like will be discussed, you know, over the next day, week, month, probably, to be honest, for the next year. Um, but I've got no doubt that, you know, it'll be felt right across the industry from staff to players, you know, we'll all be we will be chipping in in some way, shape or form. Um, exactly what the number looks like. Look, it's all just talk, I suppose, at the minute, but um, we'll, we'll find, we'll get to a number at some stage, I'm sure. So a few other things that fell out of last night with the AFL's announcement and your meeting. So a shortened season, um, the players on board with a shortened season. And in that, I suppose, it's going to mean potentially more games crammed into a, a, to a week. How does that play out for you guys? Yeah, well, essentially it's... Um, at the minute, it's get as many games as you can. That's sort of what we're hearing from the AFL. And to be honest, we haven't had a heap of discussion with the AFL around what it'll actually look like. Um, and I'm not sure really they know either. Um, whether we can get 17 games in, you know, potentially more, potentially less, I'm not really sure. Um, that'll be discussed again over the next couple of days. But, yeah, it'll be a unique situation. I remember a couple of years ago, we were talking about five-day breaks and players were umming and ahhing about whether we could get up in a five-day break. And now we're talking about three or four. So... Look, it's just something that, again, is unique to the industry and given the circumstance and, and the responsibility the players feel to, to make sure we're doing the right thing by the industry and, and, um, and fans of the game as well, I suppose, that, that want to see some football. Um, you know, we've just got to do what's required, whether that means some guys will be taking rests in between games and playing two out of every three, whatever that is, um, we'll wait and see. But, um, yeah, it's, it's all sort of up in the air at the minute. And the other thing um, that the AFL um, sort of mentioned as well is that if a player does contract a virus and a club has to go into lockdown, the season will be will take a hiatus. Um, what were your views on that? Um, well, I think it's it's sort of out of our control a little bit, and this is where you just got to be guided by the professionals. You know, we, we had a medical professional speak to us last night, and that was um, I can't remember his exact view, but it was uh, you know along those lines. And to be honest, it's if if it does happen, we just got to be guided by those that know. 
and that's what we're, we're doing at the minute is just, you know, as I said, taking it almost hour by hour because, you know, things are rapidly changing and, um, you know, if a player does get the virus, well, if, if they think that the player, they've got it early enough and the player can isolate, well, they isolate and if we're, we're fine to go on, we go on. If, if not, you know, as I said, we just, we just essentially have to play our role to, to steal a footy cliche and, and um, do whatever's required because, as I said, it's, it's not just about us here. It's, it's about the wider industry. It's about the whole community as well to make sure, you know, we're not contributing to the spread of the virus, um, but we're also, you know, doing whatever we can to, to keep things going. So the players here, what, what's the instruction? If you wake up in the morning, you've got a bit of a sniffle or sore throat, what do you do? Um, you get on the phone pretty quick to the doc. Um, yeah, you essentially just speak to our doctors. We've got two doctors here. Speak to Shory. Shory's big on wanting to just, you know, you know just give, give me a call and let me know. And um, essentially that's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of hysteria around a sniffle or a cough at the minute, but um, we are heading into flu season as well. So there's a number of, you know, is the, the line's a little bit grey at the minute. Do you, have, uh, do you have just a cough or do you have coronavirus? You don't know. So... Look, we're just taking every precaution we can and um, you know, guys are told that if they do, um, just stay home and stay home for a day or two and see how you go and isolate yourself in that sense. Um, again, it's just not worth taking the risk. And um, your private life, if there's pretty much lockdown here at the club, you know, there's no staff around other than you know, the media team and, and footy, essential footy staff. What do you do at home? What do you, how do you have to behave at home? Are you in lockdown there as well? Yeah, the test has just come out on Amazon, so I'm um, just starting to nestle in on the couch and watch that. But look, there's not there's not a heap you can do. It's it's go about business as usual, but just sort of have that awareness of what's going on in the situation you're in. I mean, it's probably not ideal to be going out to, going out to um, you know restaurants and, and cafes flat out and, and going out to nightclubs and doing that where there are obviously a lot of people and and um, viruses there can obviously spread pretty quickly. So I think it's just about. Um, understand the situation we're in uh, and I suppose doing what you can but I mean it's, it's uh, there, there is an element of this that is out of our control I mean you, you go home to your partner or your kids or you see your parents which you know you don't want to stop people from seeing them and you know you can't control what they're doing during their day so it's just around doing everything that you can in your own powers to to make sure you're <clears throat> I suppose ticking as many boxes as you can and it's probably as I said same as for the general public you know they're probably washing their hands and using um, bacterial whatever you call yeah, it exactly. wipes and all that sort of thing so they're going they're doing their best we're doing ours so um yeah it's just as i said it's an issue that everyone's sort of facing all right jay mate thanks so much for your time a complicated issue but well spoken mate thank you thanks mate